Welcome back to Time Valley Motorhomes. I'm Callum and this is a handover on the Auto Sleeper Kingdom. So as we start the walk round on the driver's side of the vehicle first, this vehicle is fitted with a 25 litre underslung gas tank and to fill it, this is your filler point here. So it is a bayonet fitting and you'd go to your local centre that sells LPG and you'd connect so connect the gun, the filler gun, and then you want to twist it and pull the trigger back. Pulling the trigger back pressurises it once it's connected onto the bayonet fitting. And then you simply press and hold the button on the display until it stops. Once it stops, it is full. And a tank like this normally costs anywhere between £22 and £25 to fill, depending on how much you're paying for LPG. You can see how much LPG is on board. By starting the engine, and you do have a gas level indicator here. So you'll be able to see how much gas is on board. You've also got your switch for your rear camera, so you can turn that on and that comes on there. So make sure that you turn that off, otherwise the camera will still be live when the engine is off, as it is on now and the vehicle isn't running, but the camera is on. So you can see behind you all the time, as well as reversing. And you've also got some rear red lights, so you can use them in the dark, should you wish. To hook the vehicle up when you arrive on site or you're charging at home, get your hooker blade, lift the collar, always hook the motorhome up first, and then the site and do it in reverse order when unhooking, to avoid carrying a live lead in your hand. When unhooking as well, there's a little clip that you need to press down, little blue clip here, press that down to safely remove the lead. This is your fresh water fill up point. So on the keys, you've got a little key and um, that takes this off and you can put the hose pipe in there and fill with fresh water. So carry a hose pipe with some hose pipe connections as it's mainly just a brass tap on site. Or if you wanted to fill from a pump, you've got a wheel pump there. So you can, you've got a pump point. This is the connection. You connect there, drop the pump into the water and it'll suck the water up into the freshwater tank but normally on a motorhome you just fill with the hose pipe external tv points so should you be going to a super site that's got an aerial get a length of coax connect it to your van connect it to the site and what that'll do is it'll use their aerial instead of the aerial on board the vehicle because some sites the aerials on the vans are not very good and they have a big aerial parked somewhere in the field that gets a better signal, so you may want to just connect to that. Fridge vents, exhaust for the vehicle, and then you do have your drain off points. So this is your blue, which is your fresh water, which you just clip them down, turn them, that'll drain off your fresh water. And then you've got your grey one, which is your dirty water. So normally on the way out of your site, you would just drop the dirty water. Tend to not travel around with a full tank of fresh water unless you're going wild camping, because if you're going to a site, just leave 20 litres in to use your own toilet, stop and have a cup of tea. But in the winter, you want to make sure these are fully drained off so no water freezes in the tanks. Flue for your boiler. So this just gives the location of where the boiler is on board. It is underneath the bed at the back. Just make sure that's always obstruction free. That'll only put a fume out on gas. It does work on both gas and electric, but on gas it lets the fuses, the fumes out. External gas points. So if you are doing some outdoor cooking, you get a quick release connector, which goes in here. You need a length of orange hose and two Jubilee clips, and then you turn it on and you can power the Kadak or the external barbecue to do some alfresco dining. Underneath your awning, of course. Opening the door. You've got the blue lights for night and the switch for your step. This will retract automatically when the engine has started and a outdoor plug so you've got a plug on there so when the doors open you can use that 
fuel goes in here and opens with the main ignition key. So the main ignition key, which is just here, opens the fuel and you can fill with diesel. This key is for your deadlock and this key is for your water filler. This one is fitted with rear air suspension, so you've got your air suspension alcohol gauges here, so you can adjust them depending on how tough you want the ride. Obviously you can put a little bit more air in the back, which is just by getting the tyre compressor, putting it onto the nipple point here on the valve and blowing it up. And you can view that. You can view online what's best to run for the rear air suspension. It all depends on weight really in the back. Weight plate here, so it's three and a half ton. It's six and a half ton train weight. So if you want to put a tow bar on and tow, you can tow another three ton behind the vehicle and you've got a front and back axle weights. Tire pressure's here, so 65 on the front, 72.3 on the rear. Tool kits underneath the passenger seat, which has got a jackknife brace and a tow eye. And then underneath both seats, you've got this red little lever. This is how you turn your seat. So push it down and you'll be able to spin the seat round. If the seat got stuck, adjust the driving position before spinning the seat. And always make sure both seats are locked in like they are now before traveling. Engine batteries underneath the floor would have been a fate to cat so lift the panel to get the engine battery should you ever need to replace it or you want to put a charger on that battery alone. Bonnet releases here. And you've got all your fluids. Main one you're going to need is your screen wash, followed by removing the three tabs that lift this cover off the scuttle. You can fill your power steering fluid, your coolant, and then next to it you've got your brake fluid. Just behind here you've got your engine filler and your engine dipstick for checking your levels. Paint codes on the front here, this so it's gold and white, so it's six, it's 506 the paint code. And then should you ever need to jump start it from underneath the bonnet, this is an earth. And your air filter, pop your key in here or anything flat, screwdriver, anything, lift it up. So lift, lift it up, that's your positive for giving or receiving a jump start. So once you jump on board the vehicle, above the sliding cargo door you do have your main 12 volt control panel. So if you're hooked up, you'll get mains 240 volt, and if you're not hooked up, you'll just get whatever charge is in your 12 volt leisure battery. And to turn your master switch on, which is this button here, you would just press and turn on your 12 volt system. If you're hooked up, you'll get this little icon here, which means you're receiving mains 230 volt. Next to it, you've got your pump, so you need to turn your pump on should you have enough water on board. And as soon as you go to turn your pump on, you can view your levels of your vehicle and leisure battery, your fresh water tank and your wastewater tank. This is your master switch for all your lights inside the vehicle, then they all are individually switched. You've got your order light on the outside of the van. You've got your dimmer. This button here is known as a power transfer button, so it'll, if you're using the leisure battery and it goes flat, you can change it so you're using the vehicle battery to control all the appliances in the motorhome. But I wouldn't advise that. I would always leave it on the vehicle, on the leisure battery should I say, because the leisure battery is the battery that's designed to be used. So if you ever flatten the leisure battery, it's not the end of the world because you can still start the vehicle. You wouldn't want to flatten the vehicle battery and then not be able to start the engine. Tank heaters here, so if it's going to freeze when you're away, you can turn on your tank heaters. And what that'll do is it will keep the water from freezing in the tanks if you're away in the winter. And you can scroll up and down here so you can view your leisure battery, your amperage, your capacity and so on. Set date and times and things by going on in the middle. View your levels. Vehicle battery, leisure battery, fresh and waste water. Take the hook about to get a true reflection of your leisure battery readings as you do get a false reading on the leisure battery when hooked up. And that is your sergeant control panel. 
So to operate your digital Truma CP control panel, to turn the system on and off, you press and hold to turn it off, press it once to turn it on and it'll come on. And then to get into the menu, you just press it once. You'll notice you've got a thermometer with it in a van flashing at the top corner. If you press enter, this is how hot you want your vehicle. So you've got all the way off in the summer when you don't want the heating, or you've got all the way to 30 degrees in the winter when it's very cold. So once you're happy, so if we say 27 degrees there, that's how hot I want the inside of the motorhome to be, I'd press enter. And that'll save that at 27 degrees. Now you've got a thermometer in some water. This is how hot you want your water. So if you don't have any water on board, you'd have it on off. 40 degrees for showering, 60 degrees for doing your dishes, but it's entirely up to yourself how hot you want your water. Or you've got boost, which will turn off your heating and prioritize your water first. But for this, we'll just say 60 degrees because we want the heating to run along with the water. Next, you've got what source you're heating the water and the vehicle off so you've got gas so make sure your gas bottles on and it's turned on you've got mix one which is 750 watts of electric and gas you've got mix two which is 1850 watts of electric plus gas so you'd use mix two in the winter if you're away and it was really cold use a mix two will boost the vehicle up the temperature because you're using both sources together then you can turn it over to electric so you've got electric 750 watts el1 and you've got el2 which is 1850 watts of electric don't waste your gas if you're on a site unless you're away and it's really cold and you've using mix two for the first 10 15 minutes then allow electric to continue to heat the motorhome and maintain the temperature because if you're on a site, you've paid your site fees after all, you'll not want to waste your gas. Then you've got your fan in the top right hand corner. So eco or high or boost. This is just a 12 volt assisted fan. So eco will use less 12 volt. High obviously uses more fan speed. So it's going to use a little bit more 12 volt. And boost uses full power on the fan, which is going to use the most out of the 12 volt battery. Sleep with it on Eco because it's a lot quieter than sleeping with it on anything else. If you're going to sleep with the heating on in the winter. You've got a timer so you can time the heating to come on and off. Just the once though. Clock in the middle and then spanner. You can go all the way down to reset. And to reset the control panel if you ever get a warning triangle in the middle. Reset, preset, click again and it will restart your control panel. And then to turn off, press and hold and it'll say off and it'll completely turn itself off. So now in the kitchen area, as long as you've got the pump on, you'll get a pressurised flow of water to all taps. So, pump's on there, you can hear the pump kick in and you can feel your water there. Your water is hot and it's getting hotter as the pump is kicking in. So your hot water system is working as it should. Underneath you've got a bit of storage underneath the sink. Some more storage here. Pushing the buttons in, you've got your cutlery drawer at the top. Storage drawer. Some more storage. And some more. So three, three drawers and your cutlery drawer. For cooking, you've got th three gas rings. So make sure when you've had these on, you allow them to go cool so that they're cool enough to lay your hand upon before you put the glass lid down. Otherwise, if not, and if they are too warm and you put the glass lid down, your, your glass will shatter and it shatters into a million pieces and it goes with a right bang. So do make sure that you wait till it's cool enough before putting this down. Light and extractor. 
So you've got an extraction fan there. Storage in the cupboards above. On off switch for your microwave, which is an 800 watt microwave. So you've got to be hooked up for your microwave to work. And then underneath, you've got a grill. And underneath the grill, you've got an oven. So you've got full cooking facilities on board. Large pan drawer. This lifts up and down and you've got three main voltage plugs there so that will only work when hooked up. So mains volts for those. Across from the kitchen you do have your wardrobe area. So your wardrobe area houses your table leg which can go in on the front there. So it just goes in just up here, removing the cupboard removing the cover even and that will go in there this is your teleco tv booster so turn it on and you can adjust the signal on here should the signal be iffy on your telly so should you be getting pixelation you can either try turn it up if it's already down or turn it down because it may be interference and that's all controlled through here on your teleco booster you can leave this on, it will go off with the main 12 volt system, so you don't have to individually keep switching it on and off each time. You've got your external shower connection in here, and a large storage cabinet for your wardrobe area. Loads of storage up in the lounge. And underneath you've got two individual reading lights. So you can have these turned on or off depending which one you want on. And these are just 12 volt. On the windows you've got a fly screen and a blackout blind. And if you push the grey cap in it will depart. And pinch these together and slide. And you've got windows and that's the same on the sliding door as well exactly the same design of windows so you can open those and you do have full real curtains so on some models these are just dress curtains on this they are actual curtains so you can pull them across it's a bit um, warmer in the winter with curtains telepoint here so you've got a tv aerial connection a satellite connection which doesn't work because you haven't got a satellite on board but should you fit a satellite you can wire to that uh, point on the socket and you do have a 12 volt connection for a 12 volt television so directly underneath the wardrobe you've got a slide out worktop extension so if you're prepping food in the kitchen and you need that extra space you can slide this out pop your plates on there and your chopping board when you're doing a bit of cooking Underneath you do have a Fetford fridge, so you've got a fridge with freezer compartment there. So to turn the fridge on and off, there's a little square button on the left hand side that you just press and hold. The control panel will go completely blank, press and hold again and it will come to life. You'll notice that A stays lit up there. And a picture of a plug a stands for automatic energy selection and what that does is it picks the best source available to the motorhome at any one time but it'll always prioritize mains connection so 230 volt is always prioritized by the fridge so on a what it'll do is if i was to take the hook about the van because the gas is on board it would automatically switch over to gas and self-ignite or if I was to put the key in the ignition and start the engine, it would switch over to 12 volt. So the 12 volt isn't a feed off your leisure battery. It's a feed off the engine when the engine's running. And it's only designed to maintain the temperature that it was previously at. So you've got a pre-chiller beforehand on either mains or gas. So if you're lucky enough to keep it at home, hook it up a few days before you go away. Not only does this give sufficient time to charge your leisure battery, but it also means you can put your fridge on 
you can put your shopping in the day before you can allow it to chill overnight and then when you're ready you just unhook start the engine and drive off to your site or if you're going wild camping drive up to your pit your place of stopping and once you turn the engine off it does wait 20 minutes before lighting on gas this is a safety feature in case you haven't shut off your gas it gives you enough time to stop fill up with diesel at the pump and leave that petrol forecourt without the petrol fumes igniting so if it was if you were wanting to get it on and it was flashing for 20 minutes all you need to do is manually override it so press the square button here take the airway so that's mains on its own it's battery on its own it's fields flashing red you've got a fault code of six which is a loss of 12 volt because the engine's not running or you can select gas temperature here so five when pre-chilling turn it down once you put your shopping in and maybe four or three depending on how cold it gets but in the summer months you may have to have it on five because it may be too hot and the fridge may need to be on full performance all the time to keep the shopping fresh when you're not using it if you lift the toggle up here so this is your handle to open the door lift it back slide the little toggle out and pop it in here when you're leaving it so that just clips in and what that'll do is it'll allow the door to be left open and allow air to circulate in and out and it'll avoid the air being trapped because once the air becomes trapped it'll start to smell and you come back to your motorhome and it'll not be smelling the best so leave the door open and it'll allow ventilation in and out of the fridge so underneath the seat in the front of the van you do have your waste tank isolation switch here so you can turn that on and off um, if you're going to be using the van you turn on your fresh water tank heater from the control panel but you've also got a waste water so if you're using it in the winter and you don't want that water to freeze obviously turn your fresh on on the panel turn your waste on here and it'll stop the water from freezing and causing any damage but that's when using the van when not using the van we always recommend that you drain all the water out especially in the winter so the fresh and the waste outside would be drained off you then drain off your boiler which i'll show you further on in the video leaving all your taps open to avoid the water from freezing in the pipelines this is your am40 interface which is the motorhome and the vehicle crossover fuses so these are the ones that cross over from the fade the cato to the auto sleeper so as you can see there you've got your marker lights your fridge because obviously your fridge takes a feed from the engine when running so if there was a problem with that check this fuse marker light 5 amp fuse for all your orange low lit lights you've got your two tone if you were, if this vehicle is fitted with a tow bar or was to be fitted with a tow bar you've got your towing fuses which come into here you've got your vehicle battery and your fridge again so that's fridge and that's fridge this is a d plus fuse supply two leisure batteries in the boxes your table also is at the back so if we just skip to the table bit at the back your legs in the wardrobe your table tops behind here that would then go into here removing the cap so removing the cap you can put the leg in and the table top this is your power supply unit so you do have the system shutdown button which turns off the supply of 12 volts so it'll stop it's basically an isolation switch so if you're partnered up in the winter it turns off the 12 volt supply to all the items so you can isolate that there this is just duplicated off the control panel all your 12 volt fuses so do carry some spare fuses with you and what that will do is it will if there's a fuse blown you just pick it out so if i just choose a fuse 
In the middle there, you can see that this fuse is all right because it's got its wiggly bit still intact. If that was to be blown, it would all be separate. And you would just pick a, get a fuse and pop a new fuse in to the same rating. And this side you do have your trips. So if you've tripped the vehicle out, try here before you try your main sight. As it may be, you've tripped the vehicle as you've overloaded the feed inside the van. If you weren't receiving power, the best way to check is trip the vehicle. If the vehicle trips, you've got power. If it doesn't trip, you're not receiving power. You can also tr try by if the might wave lights up in the background. You've got a continental styled 12 volt fitting here. So this isn't a standard one. This is the a different fitting of 12 volt. And then just in here, you've got two gas isolation valves. So you've got your heater and your boiler and you've got your fridge. So you can turn these off like so, or you can leave them on. Underneath is the location of your sure flow pump. So when you turn the pump on, and then you open the tap to kick the water around the vehicle and pressurize it, your pump kicks in. In the winter, it's very important that you, once you've opened the fresh and the waste outside the van, you've opened all your taps, you've drained your boiler off, you turn your panel on and you turn your pump on for 10 seconds, for a split second, just to allow the water out. But it's also best that this little filter here you remove the cap and you take the filter off. Or even better, you can just unscrew the fitting to the pump either side and take the one side of the fitting off the pump. What that'll do is it'll mean that any water is allowed to drain out. So put a tea towel down, mop the water up. And it also means that no water sits in the pump, potentially cracks this plastic fitting and causes any damage. And then when you're ready to reuse it, you can just connect it all back together. Because with warranty, anything, anything that's void is frost damage. So anything deemed frost damage would void your warranty. Meaning your pump, your boiler, any tanks, any pipes that's cracked because you haven't drained the water off. You need to drain the water off Otherwise, it's a costly mistake to make because it's going to cost you and not the warranty company that the vehicle is supplied with because the warranty doesn't cover frost damage. So anything damaged by the weather conditions in the winter isn't covered. So in the washroom area, to operate your toilets, making sure that you've got some water on board, of course, because that's where your fresh water flush comes from. You can press the button at the back, which gives you a, some flush. Put a small amount of flush water in the toilet, and then before you use it, you want to open the blade, which is this grey lever here. So all you need to do is slide that forward. Use the toilet. Once you've used the toilet, give it a good flush, and then close the blade back because if the blade was still to be open, when the cassette is full, you'll not be able to get it out the back of the vehicle. So when it indicates it's full, you've got two, you've got half and you've got full on this side, and it'll indicate there that it's full, and you'll be able to empty it when the light comes on. Remember to unscrew your shower head and lie your shower hose down in the shower tray with the mixer tap open when winterizing just to stop any water from sitting in the shower head itself or the hose and causing any damage and you do have yeah, your hand basin and that water there is red hot so that is working and getting up the temperature the light for the washroom has an individual switch on it which also turns the extraction fan on so i think that's why the customer has put a night light in the toilet, so that's a battery light, just so that it doesn't wake anyone else up when you go into the loo. Storage underneath the bed lifts up, 
you've got storage in there you can see that you've got your card mat your carpet your own winding handle in there your boilers at the back TV point here as well some light switches and there's two light switches at the back one thing I will tell you you'll think this light doesn't work because if I turn this switch off here you can press it all you want and it'll not come on as soon as you turn the supply onto it you can then light it up because all these lights on the ceiling are just push the middle touch sensitive and they'll turn on as long with this LED strip light which has got an individual switch on the back storage above two pillar cases when you get your pillow and your bed on you've got two pillar cases that match the curtains it's entirely up to you if you use them and you've also got a draft stopper here which just presses on the two doors so if you're going to open the doors take this off but it'll stop the draft between the two barn doors meeting by popping that on so I just press studs on and you do have blackout blinds on the back door with blackout blinds and fly screen on the side at the back of the van You've got two compartments. You've got the big compartment, which is just your storage. So if you want to load anything underneath the bed, you can. This bed is, does recline, so you can recline it up. So you can use it as a day bed as well. Or if you want to sit up in bed, just pulls up. It's on gas struts. As long as the mattress is connected to the frame with these Velcro straps. Underneath here is the location of your boiler valve which is your boiler drain valve, should I say. So you can get to the boiler if you need to get to it by undoing the screws on the board here, which is more for technicians. But all you need to do is drain it down in the winter. And to drain it down, this is a frost valve. So at three degrees, it'll automatically drain itself down because the button at the bottom here will pop out, which is that, just that blue button that you can see by my finger there. That'll pop out when it detects three degrees when it's not in use but what i would do is winterize it myself and to do that you just need to grab a hold of the blue diamond at the top turn it button will pop out and water starts spraying out underneath the van to stop this when you're ready to reuse it turn the diamond push the button in at the bottom if the button stays in great if it doesn't because it's cold when you're trying to do it put the heating on by itself first without the water you can do that because it's just air blown heating Put the heating on by itself for 10 minutes this area gets warm and you should be able to come back around and pop that button in but it does explain the last person who's had this van has put handy stickers around the van so should you forget you can either refer back to the video or you can read the label there this side you've got your cassette so to get your cassette out make sure the blades close which i'll go more into inside the van Lift the orange handle and you'll be able to slide the cassette out. You can then wheel it to the disposal point, which is normally beside your toilet block, and to empty, take the cap off, pop that to one side, press the button here, tip the contents of the cassette out. Once you've tipped it out, there's normally a tap, so you can put some water in, give it a rinse, tip out again, and then put some chemical, either blue or green, down here before going in with the cap again so once you put the chemical in which is about 120 mil you can put the cap back on and then you can push it back straight into the vehicle and then you just want to close the door which is just shut it you can use the habitation key and lock it if you want but it's entirely up to you it is behind the locked door anyway External shower, so the connection that's in the wardrobe clips onto here and should you've had the boiler on you can get hot water to hose the boots off, the bikes, the dogs or it would just be cold if it was from the boiler not being on. But you do need to have the pump on to get a pressurised flow of water from here. Always make sure you shut this door first, then that one. 
You do have a reversing camera on the back and you do it is deadlocked so you can use the deadlock system and lock the doors should you be storing it. It has had deadlocks fitted by the last owners.